Hey folks, welcome back to The Old Jarhead. Today, I wanted to answer some questions I've seen in the comments of a previous video that I put out on building an all-in-one system with a golf cart battery. And I thought I would answer some of those questions because, well, I think it's important. The first one, which I would call the big one, was grounding. This system is not currently grounded. That is not good, you shouldn't do that. So for those of you that mentioned that, you're absolutely right, it should be grounded. Can it work without a ground? Yeah, it can, but I do think that that's not good. From a safety perspective, you should ground the system. And in fact, when I hooked this up, because I hooked it up to a GFCI circuit, I couldn't hook up the ground on the utility side or it would just trip the, the GFCI. It's not designed to be set up that way. Could you set it up that way? Sure you could but you'd have to put in some grounds. And I think that, well, that's entirely doable, but because this system's not gonna sit here, I don't wanna put a hole in the wall and run a ground outside just so that I can hook it up to ground. I don't have a ground in here that I could use, otherwise I would have grounded it. But when it gets installed, it will have a ground. Now, number two, breaker size. I have a 20 amp output breaker here, can you do that? Yeah, you could but they do recommend a much higher breaker and eight gauge wire. So the AC input and output recommendation by lead time is 63 amps and eight gauge wire. So yes, if you're going to install this system and you anticipate actually using a lot of the power that it can produce, you should put in, and I would say 63 amps, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with a 63 amp breaker, I'd put in a 60 amp breaker, one of those dual pole breakers that you can get and I would hook that up with that breaker and I would run it into a distribution panel, not what I've done here as a demonstration. So yes, you should put in a 60 amp breaker and eight gauge wire. And on the DC side, it does recommend four gauge cable and 140 amp breaker. I'm running a 150 amp breaker up here, which is a typical automotive or marine type breaker. And I'm only running eight gauge wire because I knew that I wasn't gonna draw more than 45 to 55 amps out of it. Frankly, I'm not really even drawing that. So I wasn't too concerned about that. I was drawing about 30 amps out of this or less. Not a big deal. Eight gauge wire can handle up to 55 amps at six feet and we're running, well, we're running about six feet of cable. So yes, it should be four gauge. And yes, you probably should put in, well, this is 150 amp breaker. Can you get away with that? I think so. 140 is what's recommended, but I'm not familiar with 140 amp breaker. So my options were 125 or 150. I opted for 150. I would put in a distribution panel that's designed for this setup. Now there are distribution panels that you can get that will give you much closer amperage and all that good stuff. So that's definitely the way you should do that. It's what I've done at my cabin. It's what I will do here when I install the system. So those are, those are really the, the big ones. Um, beyond that, frankly, I don't know that there were any other comments or questions about this setup that I can answer for you. But if you do have any questions, do me a favor, drop them down below in the comments. I will always answer them. And by the way, no, I'm not an electrician and I'm not an electrical engineer. I worked in telecommunications for almost 30 years, did a lot of DC power. And because of that, I learned enough that I could do this and not let the smoke out. <laughs> Doesn't mean that I'm infallible and I can't make mistakes, of course I can. But I, I did wanna talk a little bit about that cabling because I think it's valid to ask, well, shouldn't you do this or do that? But there is one thing I was thinking about. If you're not going to draw more than 1500 watts off utility power or for, for that matter, a generator, then you can get away with, with 10 gauge cable. So if you're drawing 15 amps, 10 gauge is fine. In fact, 10 gauge cable you can draw up to 30 amps off of depending on the length and type of cable. So should you run eight gauge? Yes, but I will tell you this, I've run 10 gauge at my cabin for 15 years. I just never draw more than that 10 gauge can handle. Same with the battery. Now at the cabin, I tend to run bigger cables than I have to because I originally built that system as a 12 volt system where you're drawing a lot of amps. Now at 24 volts, I could get away with smaller cables. I haven't bothered to put smaller cables in because frankly, bigger's not gonna hurt anything. If I go to 48 volts, if I decide to run the cabin on a system like this one, then I will install four gauge cable coming from the battery or maybe even something bigger like a one-aught cable. 
just to be sure that I've got the proper cable size for what I might use out of it. And the last thing I thought I would mention is breakers. So I don't run a breaker between my generator and my inverter charger at the cabin. And you might think, whoa, ho, ho, what are you doing? Well, the generator actually has its own breaker. It's already got a built-in breaker, so I don't figure that I need to run two. It's a Generac 6,000 watt generator with a built-in breaker. I don't ever really draw more than 2,000 watts out of it typically. So the breaker it's got is perfectly fine and the cabling that I'm using matches the power that I'm using. But if you wanted to try to draw all 6,000 watts, well then you better run a bigger cable. That is something that you should do. So I don't want to tell you to do what I'm doing necessarily. I just think it's important to pay attention to what you're doing. Codes are going to say you have to do this. But let me tell you about codes. I have, there are codes out there that will tell you that you have to destroy a well if you don't put in septic. You're allowed to use a privy and have a well if they're 100 yards or 100 feet or whatever it is apart from one another, but you can't put in a composting toilet. You have to de de destroy your well. Well, that's ridiculous, folks, and sometimes codes are just that, ridiculous. So, yes, you should do everything the way you should. I'm not telling you not to, but if you know that you're never going to draw more than 55 amps, for example, off of your battery here, could you get away with smaller cable? Yeah. Should you? Probably not, but you could get away with it. You're not going to burn your house down. That's just my thoughts anyway, folks. I hope that answered some questions that folks had. Do me a favor, if you got any more, drop them down below, I always answer them. Meanwhile, folks, I'm gonna drop another video just for you to check out. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.